This is Rachel Fail with Rachel Fail Model Horse Tack, and I'm going to take you through a tack tutorial on buckles. There are two different types of buckles. You have tongue buckles, which have a piece that goes through punched holes in the leather, or you have sliding buckles like this that you just slide a piece of leather through and don't need to have tiny holes punched in. You can turn these into tongue buckles by putting a tongue in it and then also punching holes as well. I use a variety of different things. I use rings from um, the jewelry section and craft stores. Uh, I also used etched buckles from Rio Rondo and I also have just had wonderful luck with the cast sliding buckles from the world of model horse collecting on eBay don't have any of those in stock. I wish I did. You can also use these cast buckles from um, Rio Rondo that are pretty expensive. I think they're about a buck fifty or two bucks a piece so they can definitely add up but they're really nice. So the main things I want to go over here are the proper fit. You re when you have your lace or your piece of leather that you're um, going to be putting the buckle onto, you want to make sure that it fits really nicely. You want to have no gaps or space on the side, but it shouldn't be hard to fit through. So if this obviously fits that cast buckle very nicely, but if you were to put it through these sliding buckles, you can see daylight the, the leather is way too thin for these buckles and obviously it's not going to fit into these tiny little buckles so proper fit is a big thing I cut my own lace from um, tooling uh, calf skin and then I skive it down so I am in control of the width of all my laces which is um, a benefit because you can only really buy the lace uh, in a couple different sizes and um, it's really hard to get it to fit every single ring if, without cutting it down further. Now um, roller buckles you can make out of um, a thicker uh, craft aluminum cut it to fit just so that it, it and then fold it over um, with a little super glue. Um, you can snip it and um, put a little super glue on here and fold it over and then roll it and it makes a nice little roller buckle. Now um, the tongues, I buy these little uh, eyelet type pins can buy them at Rio Rondo or um, a craft store. I like the ones from Rio Rondo better because they're a little bit stiffer. And then I cut it just about a 90 degree, uh, 90 degrees out of it. And then you can put it on your buckle like this. And you want it to be pretty snug against the ring, but you don't want it to have a hard time spinning. And you can see that I put the roller end of this buckle on the end that had the opening, so I don't need to worry about soldering it because this tongue is not going to come out of this solid end here. If you put a tongue onto a ring that has an opening, the tongues will pull through the opening so you need to either solder it or make a roller buckle on the end with the open ring. Making a roller buckle is a little bit easier than getting the soldering gun out. Um, see uh, and then this if I I didn't put super glue on this one but you can put super glue on it and then file it down so that it looks very nice and it actually makes the buckle function um, much easier. For scale, um, you can use a lot of different things. This is my favorite tool for it. So 
um, it, gives, it gets a really accurate measurement. So um, I can use this handy dandy tool to take a measurement of like this ring and then measure on the back here this is eight millimeters so um, the, if you're using a scale conversion of two and a half inches is about seven millimeters in a one to nine scale so um, that gives me an idea that in the real world this would be two and a half three inches um, and so what I suggest is go to your local tack store with a ruler <laughs> And uh, if you don't have real tack at home and just take measurements of buckles and bits and all of these things and that way you don't have to do the guesswork on the scale you can actually make it the right size um, to make a D ring um, my favorite method is to just um, get my little needle nose out shove it all the way down the needle nose and then crimp it and it creates a nice little D-ring. That's the easiest way to do it. There are people who um, make different D-rings, but this is just my favorite way of doing it. Um, uh, for sanding, I would suggest a small file set. Um, you can you can pretty much get away without the filing on these really nice um, rings that are already smooth but definitely for etched buckles you need to prep them you need to file off um, the sharp edges from where you um, snip them out of the um, frame here and it, some roller buckles need to be filed as well um, in general I use tongue buckles and all my tack because it looks more realistic. Don't go overboard with the amount of holes you punch in a strap though. Make sure that you're looking at your reference photo and using the correct amount of holes um, and kind of spacing them to scale as well. Um, if you have a billet on a saddle that has 12 holes that half of them could never honestly be used by any size horse that you're going to be putting the saddle on, it makes no sense. So this is my little tutorial on buckles. If you would like to learn more about my tack making, stay tuned. Hopefully there'll be more tutorials to come. Thank you very much.